Hi, Graham Roberts here. Well, to understand pseudocode, we have to know that the word pseudo really means something that is like something else but isn't quite that thing. So it's like code. And by code, we really mean a set of words that could solve a problem on a computer. And basically, we're saying that this is a design language a design language to solve a problem on a computer. Now you're probably thinking, quite rightly so, that that's very like a program, a computer program. And it is. So pseudocode actually is what produces eventually when we implement it a program. So we use the design which is pseudocode to make the actual programming code which we call source code to actually make a program. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. To really understand pseudocode we have to understand what is at the heart of pseudocode and that is something which is called an algorithm. An algorithm is a solution to a problem via a set of ordered steps. So if we carry out those steps we get the result that we want. So an algorithm being a set of instructions, let's take an example. Say if we want to find the sum of two numbers. Well, we need, let's have two numbers. Let's say we have the number 13 and we want to add to it the number 6. Well, obviously we're going to get out the answer of 19. But we could write it down like this, 13, 6 with a little plus and we get the same answer. So by writing the equation this way or this way we're actually using two different algorithms but we're getting the same result and the reason we're getting the same result is because both algorithms work. Not all algorithms actually work because not all problems have an algorithm that will solve them but we're dealing with obviously ones that do when we're programming computers. So what's the pseudocode for this algorithm if we are trying to put that into a computer? Well it turns out that actually it's quite straightforward. We tend to write numbers when we talk about algorithms because we have steps. So we say the first step is to get the first number, right? And what do you think the second step is? Well, how about, that was good, let's get the second number. And what do we do in the third step? Right, well we add the two numbers together. We could say add first number to second number. We could also of course add the second number to the first number uh, but we need to do something with this don't we? We need to store the result. Now when we store this result where are we going to store it? Well we can store it as result. And then what's the fourth step? We stop. It turns out that all algorithms really have a stop, a termination. So if that's the pseudocode, how come it doesn't look 
like a computer program? Now the answer to this is because it's a step before we write the computer program. It's the design of the program. It's not the actual program. And it's important to know that it is the design of the program. So this algorithm is the design of the program when we put it into pseudocode. So we need to change this slightly to make pseudocode. How do we change it? Well, not a lot actually. We've practically got pseudocode now in this algorithm, but we could rewrite this which is um, what I'm going to do and just make it look much more like an algorithm. So we just scroll the board up and here we can see I'm going to just say 1. I'm going to say get first number and 2 get second number you're thinking, well, Graham, this is no different to the first thing you did. But it is different. We're going to say that result is equal to first number plus second number. Now, it makes no difference about how these are ordered in terms of spatial effect. It's just that the result is equal to the first number plus the second number. And a fourth point here would be to display the result because until we display the result, we won't know what it is. This is because the result will be in the computer and we won't be able to see it until we display it. When we deal with algorithms, these are somewhat being mathematical in our heads and we can see the answer in our head just that you can see that that will be the sum of the two numbers so if the first number is as it was 13 if the first number is 13 and the second number is 6 you know that this is going to be 19 but when we're with the computer in pseudocode we must display the result. So we could now say that the fifth one, remember we said termination, is stop. But the algorithm may have stop, but when we have pseudocode, we don't put in stop. We don't have to. Now we can ask the question, what are the variables here? because if it's a program it should have variables and so what we do when we have pseudocode what we do finally is to write out a list of the variables and that's what we're going to do next so a little different color here let's have some green so we can say list of variables well the variables we've got are first number and we've got second number but we've also got a variable called result so these are a list of the variables those are three variables and what if we changed our variables we could call these variables instead of first number we could have them called um, instead of first number we could say how about f n for first number instead of second number we could have second number instead of result we could just have the, the letter r well in our algorithm if we did that in our algorithm we would have as our third step or our third 
point of the pseudocode, we would have R is equal to Fn plus Sn. So we can change the variables. After all, it's only a design. Remember what we started with, that pseudocode is a design language. For computer programs. Now remember what a pseudocode has as its main heart is an algorithm and so we start in this way. We first of all look at the problem. When we've looked at the problem we find an algorithm to solve the problem when we've got the algorithm, we incorporate it, and embed it, put it into, surround it around with what we call pseudocode, which is the design for the computer program that will follow.